So I'm looking at the case of a perfectly competitive industry, and we're looking at the cost curves for a particular firm in that industry. We're going to find the profit box and think about what happens in the long run. So anytime you have a graph like this with, with cost curves, if it's a perfectly competitive market, these cost curves are going to be a representative firm. And they're always associated with an industry. So the industry has its own supply and demand curves. Um, industry. And the supply, of course, in this industry represents this particular firm's output plus any other firm that happens to be in the industry. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is determine a market price. And you're getting very used to determining market prices. That's always just going to be at the equilibrium. There's going to be some market price. We can project that market price over onto the other firms, um, and there's both of these are labeled with quantities on the x-axis for both the industry and the firm. So if we project that over onto this firm's cost curve diagram, we can actually get marginal revenue for that particular firm. So why is the industry price equal to marginal revenue in an industry? Well, um, price is determined here. Let's say the price is $20. Marginal revenue, that just means revenue is what you bring in. So um, for every unit they produce, they're going to sell it for $20 on the market. So $20 is their marginal revenue. So what we need to do next is we need to figure out how many units will this particular firm produce. And to do that, we're going to use the golden rule in economics. And the golden rule is always marginal cost equals marginal benefit. And we saw this before with consumers. For consumers, if you're going to buy something, the marginal cost is the price, and the marginal benefit is utility. Well, if you're a firm, you don't have utility. So what is your marginal benefit going to be? Your marginal benefit is going to be your marginal revenue, how much you bring in per unit. And of course, marginal cost is just um, the marginal cost of producing something, such as the flour and eggs that you have to use to produce a cupcake. <clears throat> so our marginal cost is given on here, and we've already learned why the curves have th this particular shape. So we start knowing the cost of the marginal, the shape of the marginal cost curve. And we, we will choose the quantity such that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And that happens where our marginal cost curve equals our marginal revenue curve. It happens right here. So the quantity that this firm will produce is going to be given down here, Q star. And how do we know that's true? Well, the firm basically, for every single unit they produce, um, they check and ask themselves, should we produce one more unit? So if they're at the 199th unit here, and they're thinking, should we produce that 200th unit? They say, all right, is that 200th unit worthwhile? Well, we'll bring in $20 from the 200th unit. We only actually, um, it only actually cost us $10 extra to make it. So we get $10 extra from producing that extra unit. And they keep asking themselves the same question. Should we um, produce this 250th unit? Well, we're bringing in $20. Um, it cost us 15 to make it. So yeah, we'll get an extra $5 by producing that. Let's do it. When they finally get here to 300 units, um, they ask themselves, should we produce that 301st unit? And it cost them $21 to produce um, at the 301st unit, but they only bring in $20, so they say, you know what, we're going to stop right here at th the 300th unit. And that's how we get um, our quantity for this particular firm. So now we just need to find the profit or loss box. And we remember that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. That's always the case for a firm. What you bring in in total minus what you pay out in total. And this model is pretty simple. So um, our profit is going to be equal to our marginal revenue, the $20 we get for each unit we bring in, times the quantity. Um, if we sell 300 units, our total revenue is going to be the $20, the marginal revenue, times the 300 units that we sell. So that's total revenue minus total costs. Total costs are going to equal average total costs. On average, it cost us, uh, we'll say, $35 to produce this unit. Um, it might be different here. We'll have to actually see how this lines up to see whether it's a profit or loss box, times the quantity we produce. So the average price of producing um, a good at that quantity times the quantity. 
Well, we noticed that both of these pieces, marginal revenue times quantity and average total cost times quantity, those look like um, one thing multiplied by another. That looks like a that looks like a, a rectangle. Um, so we're going to be looking for both of these rectangles, the total revenue rectangle and the total cost re rectangle, on our graph. And one other nice feature is that we notice both of them have the same base. Both of them have quantity in their base. The quantity this firm is producing is given by this base. So both of our rectangles will have the same base. We just need to find their height. All right, so the height of the revenue is given our mar by the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue times quantity. Here's our height. Here's our base. So our total revenue box is this big thing here. Let's just keep that in our head as we do this next step and because we're eventually going to need to subtract these two boxes from one another. So our total cost box is given by average total cost times quantity. So we have our same base. And um, this is, I would say, the trickiest part of this whole process is what is the average total cost at that quantity? Um, if you forget to look at the quantity, you're going to get confused where to look on the graph. But we know that we're at this quantity, so the only things that matter are the curves that are true at this quantity. And of course, the marginal revenue um, is, is definitely equal to that at that quantity. The average total cost at this quantity is up right here. So our total cost box is going to be quantity times average total quantity, which is given by this box here. So we have our two boxes, our total revenue box and our total cost box. And we're going to shade the difference between those two. And that difference is either going to be profit or loss. And now we just have to figure out which one is it. Is it profit or is it loss? Um, and we notice that our marginal revenue box is bigger than our, uh, sorry, our total revenue box is bigger than our total cost box. So revenue exceeds costs. This is going to be a profit box. So this firm is making a profit in the short run. So what's going to happen in the long run? Well, we need to go back over to the industry and think about what's going to happen in the industry in the long run. People are going to get jealous of that profit box. So they're actually going to enter the industry. And as they enter the industry, the supply curve is going to shift out. How far out is it going to shift? Well, it's going to shift out um, until the long run profits are driven down to zero. And where will that happen on this graph? This, that will happen where average total cost equals uh, marginal cost. And um, these two points are not necessarily exactly equal. This one's like slightly higher. And I know the way I drew it, they look like they're exactly equal, but they're not. So let me just draw this like slightly below. In the long run, the price will be driven. So I'm going to call this price in the long run. It will be driven down to the point where marginal cost equals average total cost, meaning supply will shift out exactly to that point. And if we do the same analysis at that point, we will find the economic profits are equal to zero. Um, we can do our revenue box and our cost box. So in the long run, this particular firm is going to be producing this quantity, it's the quantity in the long run. Their cost box is going to be the quantity times the average total cost. Here's their cost box. Their revenue box is going to be their total revenue, and their, we noticed that their marginal revenue was driven down to this, this point here. This is marginal revenue in the long run. So their marginal revenue times their quantity is going to give us our total revenue box, and we notice it's exactly equal to our total cost box. So economic profits are zero in the long run. So this is where the supply curve will end up in the long run in this industry.